Hi guys, I'm back today with an interesting topic I want to talk about um, and it's titled Sexism is Bad for Business and I want to talk about this because a lot of people shy away from talking about it and especially leaders and bosses and managers and I think this is an important topic for us to address and if we shy away from addressing such topics we really need to take a step back and evaluate if we are the right leaders for those people or if we are the leaders we thought we are. Let me tell you in summary what sexism at the workplace or sexism in business means. It means basically bias or discrimination based on gender. This is not exclusively for women and it's not exclusively for men, it's for both. And unfortunately, women tend to experience this more than men. I wanted to make this video to kind of give you some examples I've experienced from sexism as a way to educate not only women but men on these issues and why this is very important for us to learn about just like we learn about anything else. I'll give you an example of uh, a meeting that I took um, actually last year at the same day of International Women's Day. Imagine I was speaking in a conference as a guest about International Women's Day. And then in the afternoon, I actually had an investor meeting for one of my businesses. So my partners in that business, both of them are men, and I'm the only female. So we go to this investor meeting, and this guy happened to be very interested to invest in our business. Um, and when I went there, immediately the minute I entered the room, the vibe was a bit weird. You can see the guy was not himself. He was acting really, really not normal. And I didn't know what's going on. So we sat, uh, and then I was asked to present. I was asked by my partners, not the gentleman. Okay? So I started uh, presenting. And after I finished presenting, uh, we opened the floor for questions and the guy refused, literally refused to ask me questions. So he started asking questions to my male partners and he looked them in the eye, like really open and serious and you know what, and asked them serious questions about numbers and business and return on investment and things like that. So my partners kept referring him to me because I am in charge and I have this information and I know the business is actually my business idea. <laughs> and, um, but he kept refusing. Like he didn't say it to my face, but he would actually ask a question to my partners and then they would refer him to me and then he wouldn't like look at me when I talk. And when he tried to ask, when he got the message that he needs to start asking me questions, otherwise he won't get answers, he start like asking me questions with his head down like that. So I know he doesn't have any, you know, disabilities or autism or anything, th anything like that. Because in the beginning, I felt like bad. I felt like maybe he suffers from something and I was giving him benefit of doubt. But then I realized that's not the reason. The reason is because he's sexist. He can't look me up in the eye and talk to me. I don't know, like, what, what the heck, you know? So throughout the meeting, I was trying to be as acceptab acceptable or, you know, I don't know. I was trying to make this meeting work. But then at some point, I see my business partners getting frustrated. You can see it from their body language. I know them very well. I know them for years. So I know when they are not into the conversation. So then I suddenly decided, you know what? I'm going to stop this meeting. And I told the guy, I apologize. We will have to stop the meeting. Because if you don't have the guts to look me in the eye when you ask me questions, you are only doing eye contact or making eye contact with my partners who happen to be guys like you I don't think we can do business because how I'm going to deal with you there will be times not times multiple times this business will require a lot of effort from me therefore I will have to deal with investors therefore I can do business with you I don't care how much money you can invest in the business I honestly don't care if you can look me in the eye and we left and the whole ride back my partners were like so sorry Kautar. that we don't know like this was frustrating for us we couldn't control ourselves and i was laughing i wasn't laughing at, at at their reaction i was laughing that the guy did not get it even my partners did not accept the fact that he was sexist and they were frustrated more than i did at the moment 
Can you imagine? So I really applaud my, my partners because they really stood up for me. <laughs> they didn't let it continue. And we stopped it immediately. So this is a perfect example. If someone doesn't talk to you, doesn't look you in the eye, doesn't really give you respect that you deserve, you know this is not going to go anywhere. So just leave. Another example, I've seen this a lot, a lot, a lot. But this specific example, when I used to work, um, not as an entrepreneur, but I worked for an entity, uh, I had a boss who had a personal assistant uh, who happened to be a female. She got pregnant and left the job. Like she basically resigned. So he had to hire someone else. He hired a guy as a personal assistant, a young guy, very nice, very smart. And the guys in the office could not cut him a break. They were making jokes. I could hear them in the background. They were making jokes about what, why the hell he's hiring a, a guy to be his personal assistant. This is a female's job. And I was like, question mark, question mark, question mark. Like who decided that being a personal assistant is a female's job? Just because it's an administration, an executive administration job, you think women are not smart enough? I know so many successful people both in the UAE and outside the UAE who has, you know, personal assistants who are males and they never have issues with that. But this shows you that both, both genders can get it. But at the same time, it taught me how men look at certain jobs and they think these jobs are only for women because women are not intellectual enough or they're not smart enough or they can be in specific jobs, which is really backward thinking, very, very backward thinking. Another experience I experienced as well is uh, double standards. You know, double standards is something in sexism that exists big time. For example, I remember one time I was under a lot of pressure. I was working on a very high budget, like millions, you're talking millions. And, and I had to really keep, you know, things aligned and things were falling apart because my partners were not, you know, meeting deadlines and things like that. So I had to step up my game and take over. When I had the meeting with the, with a client, I was frustrated because the client had like made so many mistakes as well from their side. And then they tried to blame me for it and they couldn't blame me for it. I have everything like in writing. So I was really angry. And then when I left the conversation, shifted from crisis to why culture is so moody and grumpy and sharp and rude and loud. And I heard it from multiple people, from my team, from their team and everything. I was quiet. I didn't say anything. I was like, you know what? Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Like two days later, their director general was so mad. <laughs> he came and he was pissed off. He did a lot of crazy things in the meeting. And you know what uh, the response was? Poor man, he is under a lot of pressure. The expectation is high. Um, you know, he has so much going on. And I was like, double standards here? Because I am not less important or less stressed about the same project than him. So why did I get the negative feedback and him, he gets the pity feedback? that he is under pressure, he handles so many things. It's just double standards to me, you know, like, don't do that. Like, this is unacceptable. Um, another element that I also experienced a lot is that in meetings, you know, I like to let people talk and then I reply with my response. Sometimes there are conversation where like, they say so many things and I need to jump in or I wait until they are done, regardless of their gender. And then, you know, come and say my input. This is general etiquette. You don't have to be an expert and comes to figure this out. But I noticed that in meetings, I get interrupted all the time by men. <laughs> Sometimes I know it's by mistake, they get excited and they want to say something. But most of the time, honestly, I get interrupted. And I haven't even said my full sentence. I didn't even say my first sentence. And I get interrupted. And by the way, this is not just me. Me, I'm also in, I attend meetings where I see this happening between men and women all the time. So it doesn't only happen to me. It happened to other women attending meetings with me. And I feel like this is such a bad thing, you know, um, needs to be fixed, really needs to be fixed. Because a lot of creative and innovative ideas get missed out when women are shut down 
or women like us to do you know certain things in meetings like take minutes of meeting and don't contribute oh i'm the boss let me speak this is very backwards like doesn't work for you know 2020 and wouldn't work for short, surely for 2030 so things has to really change um i also th- like experience a lot of um situations and meetings where people come and say like after the meeting is done, they don't know me. They don't know anything about me. After the meeting is over, they come, hey, Kauthar, your father is so-and-so. You don't need to work. And I'm like, <laughs> first of all, yes, that's my father. I'm very proud of him and I'm very proud of his achievements. But I'm also very proud of my mom and that's my mom. And I tell them about my mom and what she's done in community. And then I like basically tell them, but I'm my own person. And I'm also doing my own things. I don't like when people ask these stuff because it shows you that, oh, either you don't need the work, you know, you're, you're daddy's girl, daddy will give you the money. Why are you working? You know, I'm not a trophy to be at home. I'm an intellectual person. I've studied hard. I worked hard. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, an active contributor to society. So why bring this up? Like, I don't get it. Um... Another thing is like, they always used to ask me, I'm not saying everyone, but like this, I used to get a lot. Wow, Kauthar, you are so young. You are in this position. Oh, you have four businesses. Wow. How did you get to this level? When someone asks you this question with, wow, mashallah, how did you do that? You have to know there's a hidden message behind it. They're not impressed that you've done this. They want to know, who do you know? that got you that job or helped you get there. And they assume it's a man (laughs) all the time. And I think I'm only saying this because I truly experienced this. And I only had to figure this out once I started like investing time learning about this because I really wanted to know why people behave and ask specific questions. And I figured it out, it's sexism at work. And it's very simple. Um, what else I wanted to, yeah, notice something when there is an assignment or a big project or anything and woman is in charge, men men panic, they panic like, oh God, now we don't know what's going to happen. Oh, she will do this and that. Like they get nervous. They get nervous because of self-esteem, because, because lack of experience. And also because they think that female in charge are less important than them. And this is something culturally needs to change. Um, And it's very important. And unfortunately, throughout business, I see a lot of great ideas die or, you know, great ideas go away because of sexism at the workplace. They don't give a chance or opportunity uh, to women. Some organizations, I've seen them myself and I've experienced it in my own business, uh, seeing it, how people treat women. Even as an investor, female investor, how people look at me. They think I'm like very soft and I'm not going to be, you know, harsh or my expectation will be low. It's too much. I always, you know, talk about this uh, in my house with my family and everything. And I remember my mom telling me just two weeks ago that, Kauthar, maybe this is our job to educate men. I start laughing. I start laughing like a crazy person. And my mom was like, what's wrong with you? And I said, mom. It's not my job or your job to educate men about sexism at work. I said, it's their job. We have something called Google. (laughs) If they know how to, if they can figure out how to stream their football on the screens, how to plug in PlayStation, how to Google to change something in their car, they can definitely Google things about sexism to educate themselves. So I hope this topic wasn't heavy and I hope this opens up um, people's minds because truly I believe some people are sexist without knowing that they are sexist. So I hope this message gets across positively, although I am honestly irritated by it. And I hope people will benefit from this video. And yeah, if you have experienced sexism at work, um, and you want to share your examples, please comment. I would love to hear or DM me. I, I want to learn how people handle situations like this because this is truly a problem. 
and it's killing innovation and it's killing growth so let's not miss out on opportunities and let's let's be fair to women and men <laughs> some men also face sexism at work so yeah thank you and take care